Hello, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Welcome and thanks for joining us as we open the pages of another Jamaica magazine. In today's show, we review last week's happenings in Jamaica House and flash back to 2016. So don't go away. The news is right after this message. Violence against women and girls is a human problem. Not just a woman's problem. It's a problem for men too. Gender violence takes many forms, including sexual assault, domestic violence, relationship abuse, sexual harassment, and sexual abuse of children. The magnitude of ongoing violence against women and children in our country is cause for alarm. We can end the violence it requires all of us to end the violence. I call on all our men and women in Jamaica to take a stand. And men especially must get involved in this movement to create a better world for their daughters, their mothers, their sisters, their aunts, their uncles, their fathers, their sons, and for themselves. Let's protect and reassure. Let's unite to end gender violence. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, January 10. An additional $20 million will be allocated to complete the road leading to the Akampong Maroon Village in St. Elizabeth. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett made that announcement during the annual Akampong Maroon celebrations on January 6. The money will be added to the initial sum of $9 million that was provided by the Tourism Enhancement Fund to improve roads in the area. Minister Bartlett says that money was well spent and this new allocation will increase visitor arrivals to the heritage site. He says efforts will also be made to establish a cultural center in the area to expose the talents of youth and ensure that the avenue for cultural expression remains available. Students set to take this year's Grade 6 Achievement Test, GSAT, are to sit a national mock examination on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. The mock examination has been designed by the Education Ministry to judge students' preparation and readiness for GSAT. State Minister Floyd Green says the examination will cover mathematics, language arts and communication tasks, as well as practice papers for social studies and science. Meanwhile, he says all is on track for the 2017 GSAT slated for March 16 and 17. He says final arrangements are being made with emphasis on making provisions for students with special needs. A bulletin is to be issued to primary schools to collect information for accommodating students with special needs who are sitting the examination. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck says provisions will be made in the upcoming fiscal budget to support increased work to be undertaken by custodies in the expanded program of the ministry. We thought it very necessary that we at least put in place that we can provide an office, provide a secretary, and certainly, you know, provide some reimbursable expense to the custodies so that across the different parishes, the work of the Justice Ministry can be properly carried out. The minister was addressing a recent meeting with custodies. Under the expanded justice program, the plan is for each parish to have a justice center that will be responsible for training persons in restorative justice, mediation and child diversion. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, has extended its one-month earthquake awareness campaign in January to March. At the launch on Monday, Director General Major Clive Davis said this was to get persons to take on a culture where they were able to identify and reduce risks, as well as to prepare for disasters. It is envisioned that the ODPEM will continue to build a culture of safety among individuals, households, organizations, about earthquake and the consequences thereof. He says in 2012, ODPEM carried out rapid visual screening on 77 critical facilities in Kingston, including police and fire stations and hospitals. 60% failed, indicating that they would not be expected to perform well under an earthquake. 
Major Davis says this resulted in parish council officers and members of other national response agencies being trained in rapid visual screening to identify and screen buildings that are potentially seismically vulnerable. So that in the event of an earthquake, and even before the quake, they have the skills at hand where they can go out and do the rapid visual screening, give us some ideas of what could happen and be able to address them. And finally, the family of national hero Marcus Garvey has donated his insignia for the Order of National Hero to Liberty Hall. His son, Dr. Julius Garvey, handed over the National Medal of Honor along with a Bible owned by Garvey during a recent ceremony. The items will be displayed in the museum dedicated to the life and teachings of Marcus Garvey. Culture Minister Olivia Grange says the donation is a selfless act that speaks to the level of nationalism and pride that the Garvey family ascribes to Jamaica. Her message was delivered by Chairman of the Jamaica National Heritage Trust, Lalita Davis Mattis. I envision that the memorabilia, particularly the National Medal, will be the source of fascination for many and will serve to further enhance the educational experiences of the persons who utilize Liberty Hall for research about this great man. Former Prime Minister Edward Siaga, who accepted the medal on behalf of the museum, spoke to Garvey's importance to Jamaicans. This man, in my mind, was the most important history man in the history of Jamaica. He was important because of his message. He was important because of the way in which he believed that message. He was important because of the way in which he could confer and pass on the inspiration that he felt and the message that he had. And that's it for Jazz News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. Masia Osbande, ima one of the biggest joggies. Ah! Wait, somebody has scream. Lad them a bond of rice work and never pay the extension money. Who them mande? How would them a do the jacky little data? <laughs> it's serious times. Speak up for justice and keep your eyes open. When you hear about any crime, report it. Silence brings violence. A message from the Ministry of National Security. The team at the office of the Prime Minister was kept busy this past week. Catch the highlights in Jamaica House Weekly. Public sector transformation to be fast-tracked in 2017, with Maria Thompson Walters leading the implementation team. And Prime Minister urges communities to shun criminals. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I am Simone Wolf. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says implementation of government's public sector transformation program will reduce corruption across ministries, departments, and agencies. Wherever you see too much bureaucracy, um, long decision making processes, um, you know long time frame for making decision, you will find corruption. So the objective that we are pursuing is to integrate technology, to do the business process engineering so that we are more efficient. The efficiency of your institution actually reduces and removes the incentive for corruption. And so everything that we're doing here is about making the public sector more efficient, which invariably means less corrupt. The Prime Minister was delivering a policy statement on the public sector transformation program last Thursday. He said public sector transformation would be fast-tracked with the formation of an implementation team headed by Maria Thompson-Walters. The team will be monitored by the Public Sector Transformation Oversight Committee. It is expected to carry out a slew of measures to make the public sector more efficient and suit the government's push for economic growth. Among the measures, the implementation of shared corporate and human resource services, mergers and divestments, public service reform and compensation reviews. This iteration of public sector transformation is not about cutting jobs. It is about increasing the efficiency of people who work in the system. And we are not blaming the civil servants for inefficiency. What we are saying is that the way in which the civil service is structured 
does not allow you to utilize your full potential in an efficient way. And so we have to now move some jobs from where they are underperforming or not contributing enough to other areas where they can contribute. The only protector of the community must be the government of Jamaica, the police force, and Jesus Christ, the Almighty Savior. We don't need any dons and criminals to protect us. Prime Minister Andrew Holness urging Jamaicans to shun so-called area leaders as he addressed the 12th annual Heal the Family, Heal the Nation church service on Wednesday. Calling crime the greatest threat to family, the economy and prosperity, Mr. Holness said every Jamaican should unite in addressing this scourge. Now is the time when the law-abiding, God-fearing Jamaicans must turn their eyes, their backs on the criminals. Don't let them survive in your community. Don't give them safe haven in your community. When you see the police going out and doing their duty and the army going out and doing their duty, you just keep quiet. Just stand off and watch. Because the same one who you are defending today is him going to turn round and rape your daughter and kill your son. The Prime Minister also made a special appeal to church goers to support the state's fight against rising levels of crime and violence. There is some work that obviously the government has to do. But there is some praying that I really need the church to do. The spiritual invocation and empowerment of an intervention to make a transformative change in this country. Prime Minister Holness also met with another group of church leaders this past week. On January 4, he met with the planning committee for the annual National Prayer Breakfast to get updated on the activities for this year's Leadership Prayer Breakfast. This year's function will be held on January 19 at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. And that's how we close Jamaica House Weekly. Join us next time for more of the news coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. in which administrative leadership changed hands, but Jamaica's foreign relations did not lose step with our diplomatic commitments and priorities. Prime Minister Rowley and I acknowledged the need for improvements in our trade relations including the removal of impediments to free trade and the free movement of goods and services between both our countries. Trinidad has committed to training its officers. Uh, they have committed to providing a facility that will ensure that persons who are not permitted to enter have dignified accommodations until returned. on Jamaica and other Caribbean countries will be felt primarily in the area of trade. We will be taking the opportunity to examine this matter and to start to chart a way forward amidst all the uncertainties. Notwithstanding our small size, Jamaica continues to make an important contribution to global governance within the multilateral arena.
while we acknowledge that there have been have been many benefits to the par participation in CARICOM, all is not perfectly well in our community relations. The Honorable Prime Minister's call for a review of the mechanisms that drive the process of regional integration in the Caribbean community has therefore resonated as being more than appropriate, but in fact necessary. I've commenced dis discussions and dialogue with young leaders and future leaders of Jamaican heritage in North America. And I look forward to engaging the church, especially those churches in the diaspora, to work together with my ministry and our overseas missions. The diaspora represents a wealth of human capital, skills and expertise, which can and must be leveraged. And in times of crisis, Key diplomatic appointments were also made in 2016. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in 2016, ensuring Jamaica is set for prosperity. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world. Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. I would like for more young people to um, get more jobs and um, for them to put God first. Yeah, I wish to see Jamaica becomes a better place where everybody can live in peace and work and have fun and take your kids out. Oh boy, peace. Peace. <laughs> Just less, less murders, less heinous crimes. Just less of that. And, you know, happiness for all. I wish for Jamaica is that we just come together as one and live as peaceable as possible with each other. Wishes for Jamaica, well, a lower crime rate, definitely, more than anything else. Well, I wish um, Jamaica could have more peace, you know? Not uh, just any violence and just, just peace and just love each other, you understand? For the new year, it would be a better country. I think like everybody else, we are hoping for a more peaceful society, um, and I wish for growth and prosperity, and, um, good progress. 2017 for the country is more job opportunities and for people to start better life. But since the start of the year, there's a lot of life being lost, especially female. Less crime and violence, that's all. Less crime against our women. Too much crime, too much women being killed. Well, just peace and love. And all the crime should be, you know? That's just basically it. For all of us. Just like a love and a while. For the 2017, that um, the crime rate cut down. Um, um, community getting more involved in um, domestic affair. You know, report it and um, you know, uh, you know, love. You know, show love to each other and um, you know, crime can cut down. You know, crime can cut, but stuff that all depends on the community. For the crime to go on. I wish all the best, all the best things. We are in the process of getting through. You do understand? So here for 2017, all will be well. All will be well. Be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I have something to hurt them. Mind what you're saying to my sister. She could be the next prime minister. Sexual abuse is always a very difficult thing to confront, particularly when the alleged victim is a child. Parents, if it is that you suspect 
that your child has been sexually abused or is in a vulnerable set of circumstances where an abuse may occur, we encourage you to have dialogue with your child. Take the child to the pediatrician who normally attends to the child. If there is no such pediatrician, take your child to the clinic, to the hospital, to some medical practitioner who can do an assessment for you. It's very important as well that we don't just look at the physical side, but we also seek to find kind of the kind of psychosocial support that a child may need. Does the child need a session with a counselor? Does the child need to speak with a pastor who is used to dealing with these issues? Does the child need to get that ongoing psychological support to assist with the healing process and also to assist the child in becoming strong enough, as it were, to deal with the various processes that will follow once it is that you suspect an abuse has occurred. If it is that the child actually discloses when you engage the child in discussion that yes, mommy and daddy, I was abused, we encourage you to entertain the child, to listen to what the child has to say to you and to take it very seriously. So we really urge you to have those discussions and to seek guidance in terms of, do I speak to the police about this? Which we always say you have to, because once a child has been sexually abused, it's a criminal matter. And it means that once at all possible, the child should be assisted to go through the processes so that the perpetrator can in fact be held accountable. Support your child and let them understand in very clear terms that they are not the cause or the reason for this abuse having been perpetrated. But the most important element is to support them, get them access to the services that they need, and give them a chance to have you give them that listening ear. For these tips, and of course, any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134 or website www.oca.gov.jm. Thank you. Watch what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you say to me, sister, cause she could be the next prime minister. With the help of the Japanese government, the National Solid Waste Management Authority is rolling out a new approach to garbage collection. Let's take a look. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWME, has been partnering with the Japan International Corporation Agency, JICA, since 2004. Over this 12-year period, 30 employees from the NSWME have been to Japan where they received training in areas that included composting, managing recycling facilities, landfill management techniques, sustainable solid waste for CARICOM countries, sustainable waste management for Caribbean islands, solid waste management A, which consists of basic introductory courses, and Solid Waste Management B, which consists of advanced courses. Beneficiaries on return submit a report and a proposal on the subject matter for funding by JICA under their follow-up corporation facility. One such project is the Solid Waste Reduction Through Waste Separation, Waste Diversion and Recycling Pilot Project. The Solid Waste Reduction Through Waste Separation, Waste Diversion and Recycling Pilot Project supports one of the main mandates of the National Solid Waste Management Authority that is to implement programs that will effect behavioral change. So we welcome this initiative. For the next six months, the pilot project will be in three communities, namely Caribbean Estates, and Caymanas Country Club Estates in St. Catherine and Rollington Town in Kingston. The project is estimated to be about $7 million, of which $6.7 million is being funded by the Government of Japan through the Jamaica International Corporation Agency, JICA. And as such, we are very grateful for this. In the coming months, we will be meeting with residents, hosting community meetings, attending the Citizens Association meetings, and basically encouraging persons to separate their plastic containers, their cardboards, and cans from their regular household waste. So we will be asking residents to take out these items and a separate truck will come and do the collection. And we will give these items to a third party companies. 
the learnings from this pilot project will assist the authority to develop policies and plans to guide and to help us to better manage solid waste and to get residents to buy into the concept of separating their plastic containers, their cans, and also cardboards from their regular household waste. So at the end of the project, we will be in a much better position to determine behavior and attitude towards separation at source, how to really convince and to influence persons, residents, to separate these items from their regular household items. On behalf of JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency, I'm pleased that NSWMA hold this pilot project of waste reduction through waste separation, waste diversion, and recycling. This project is planned by a senior planning officer of NSWMA who had participated in JICA training in Japan titled Sustainable Solid Waste Management for CARICOM Countries. After he returned from Japan, he planned it based on what he learned in Japan. I am happy that JICA can assist this project and the JICA follow-up cooperation program. Also, the amount is not bigger than 6.5 million Jamaican dollars. Uh, JICA has been offering several training programs uh, to NSWMA since 1980s. So, so far about 30 NSWMA staff had participated in these JICA training programs. This is a good government initiative based on a sponsorship from the Japanese government. Um, it has allowed us to be one of the pilot projects and we, the citizens and the residents of Caymanas are grateful for this project because it allows us to sort our garbage, especially with the PET bottles. These are a continuous growing source of concern for our garbage collection with regards to blocking our drains and causing havoc in on sea life. NSWMA Solid Waste Management has given us the bags so that it will encourage residents to carry out their bottles and put them in a central area that will be collected once a week. We will be sensitizing the residents based on the fact that it will encourage us to reduce our solid waste disposal. We are taking up the plastic bottles, which we call the pet bottles, for recycling. So what we do, we separate them from the regular garbage in order to have the community be in a better environment. We, will, we have collections at the primary school, the Rollington Town Primary School, at 17 Montague Street, at the fire station, and Arcot Road for now, but we are enlightening the rest of the community people about this project. It will help the community in a, in a vibrant way because less garbage, less bottles being around, um, seeing that we have the Zika virus around, this will also help to decrease the, the, the mosquito-borne disease being, being harbored around. I think it is a phenomenal first step in the direction, right direction that Jamaica needs to go, um, engaging the community. Um, Recycling Partners, as you know, uh, fully endorses the program. And um, as we mentioned, we will continue once uh, your test period is done. Uh, we are committed to continue cleaning up those neighborhoods and collecting the bottles. And um, we'll also use it as a test pilot for other communities that we are hoping to bring on board. Waste separation is the way forward, and the NSWMA, through our partners, is working to make this a way of life for all. This brings us to the close of Jamaica Magazine for today. Keep informed on happenings in Jamaica by visiting our website, gis.gov.jm, and do stay connected with us on our various social media platforms. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Join us on this same station tomorrow for another Jamaica Magazine feature. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.